everybody. Welcome back to the Resistance Broadcast. I'm John. Thanks for joining us on a Monday. We are here to talk to you about Star Wars, of course, but this is our discussion show. Uh, we have an interesting topic for later in the show, as you see in the title. Is Star Wars moving away from trilogies? Uh, it was a staple for a long time, and the recent gamut of a slate of movies in production don't appear to have connections uh, direct connections anyway, so uh, we'll we'll speculate on that a bit later. But uh, with me as always here, James and Lacey. Uh, again, I'm John, uh, and it is time to talk Star Wars. So uh, how's everybody doing? You guys, uh, you guys ready for for spring? We we talked about it a bit last week. I don't know if you got snow, James, but me and Lacey woke up to snow last Thursday. Uh, before mm-hmm. five, and I thought Gross. we were done with it. So, did you get any uh, wintry weather out in Ohio, or are you guys warming up? Um, we're getting storms. We we are getting some wintry weather. We're getting some snow flurries and things like that. Um, but the biggest thing is like where we live. I don't know about you guys, but where we live, we're sort of in that Midwest tornado, windy change of weather a lot. All right. Yeah. So the other day, we absolutely got this huge like across all the state of Ohio, there's going to be really bad storms. And we really lucked out either like we didn't get them or nobody got them. It ended up not happening. But I can tell you this, like all of our like after school classes were canceled. Uh, lots of businesses closed uh, early. I mean, it was like we were thinking about whether we were going to take Bennett out of school. It was like the news was like, it's going to be really bad. Wow. And, and it's because like we had this like cold coming in, but it was like really hot here. So it was just like the perfect measure for like multiple tornadoes. It didn't end up happening, but um, so that is good. But what I can say is that today, as of releasing this podcast, um, is the day that we are seeing the solar eclipse. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Yeah. We are actually perfectly in line now. Hopefully there's no clouds. That's the biggest fear in my mind because it's that, you know, you guys know, it's like this once in a lifetime opportunity. It's coming through. It's like right in our house. We don't have to travel. Um, Perfect, perfect, perfect opportunity. And there might be clouds. Who knows? So that would just Mm -hmm. suck. Um, Mm. But uh, hopefully I'm watching the eclipse today uh, with Bennett and my my wife. So, and. For anyone who has our TRB sunglasses, they do not work <laughs> as a Do not use them. Yeah. So do not use them. Feel free to put them on over your solar protected. Uh, yeah, I gotta eyes. get a I, yeah. yeah, I gotta get a pair of those. I think Kathleen is, is getting them from school. Mm-hmm. I don't or think it's getting us, right John. Now. Yeah, what? I don't think it's 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 in hitting your the middle app. of the country. So like Airbnb put out a graphic of who's renting places this week. And right, it's like a that. big stripe through the middle of the country. Well, it's, I, I, it's a, so think like maybe like it's thirty miles wide, but yeah, it's just from a Ohio to kind of like Chicago. I still see it. No, no, you might not even be able to see a partial eclipse. What? <laughs> You're like John's like just now finding out. He's been thinking this whole time. He's like, I'm going to participate in that. Can't wait. Yeah, I'm gonna, no. Put no, a lawn chair on my roof. No, it's, yeah, it's yeah, only it's just certain parts part. of the country. So I'm I'm perfectly in it. I'm it's in, in that the exact middle stripe. Strip. Yeah. So we're 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 getting nothing. We're getting nothing. You you might be getting a partial. Are you sure on that, Lacey? We got this whole email sure from the school okay. about you know. I would think that sounds right. <laughs> Someone at the school didn't do the research. Yeah, the principal, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she doesn't watch this my son will be on the i mean maybe list. maybe something will happen you never know but i thought we were yeah. seeing an eclipse i no. didn't realize that's why everyone's yeah. renting houses in the middle of the country i'm trying to find the like partial eclipse thing but yeah I, honestly john i'm 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 actually very confident you're not seeing the full eclipse unless you want to go to north new york like yeah like albany the, the very no, top way. of new york yeah. Albany? Either, isn't it Albany? Albany. Albany? You could go to Buffalo. I could curves. go to Buffalo. Or Buffalo. I, I might as well go to Ohio, though, at that Which point. Which is enough. Just, yeah, that's yeah. 10 hours. 9, 10 hours from here. 
That's the weird thing. Connecticut's in a weird position that like so many things are like nine to 10 hours. Like you're talking like uh, North Carolina, uh, Tennessee, like all these things are equally. Yeah. That's kind of a cool, cool spot where you guys live because you have a lot of available big cities that you could go to. I could go to the Boston concert or the New York City concert or whatever. (laughs) I'm the worst person to say that to because I will not be going to any concert. You're not going to any of them? I like where we live because we're an hour from Cincinnati and we're an hour from Columbus. And if we really wanted to, we're like uh, an hour and a half or almost two hours to Indianapolis. So usually Mm -hmm. a big concert or show or event will probably come to one of those three. And then the worst case scenario is if it's only going to Chicago, that's five hours. So it's not terrible. Yeah, no, we're close to New York and everything. It's just, I think it's, I take it for granted because I've been so many times, especially Boston too. It's like, okay, it's there. I'll never forget a trip to New York. I was on the road, um, like we were touring and my sister and her husband came to, uh, they to watch the show and then they were going to the next one. So I rode with them over overnight instead of on the bus. And we were driving past New York city and they were like, Oh, there's New York. And it was New York like at night lit up like times square, you know? And they were like, we could just go over there. And I was like, have you guys ever been to New York? And they were like, no, neither one of them. And I was like, go like, what are we doing tonight? Like, what are we going to do? We're going to drive to the hotel. Like, why don't we just push that back one hour Let's just ride right over there, park, go see Times Square, get, you know, your street meet and and see the naked cowboy or whatever you want to do. Like, just take that moment and experience it in. And it was like life changing for them. And they, they talk about it all the time. They're like, I'm so glad we just took the one hour to do that because I'll never forget the one time that I went to New York and saw the city in lights, you know? That's so funny. But- My sister's from Colorado. Well, She's from here originally, but she moved to Colorado and her uh, husband, Matt, who might be listening. Hello, Matt, uh, had never been to New York. So like she when he came to visit, he went there. My parents were like, you want to go to New York? And I'm like, no. (laughs) (laughs) And they did like the bus tours and went to like Ellis Island. Your sister's married to a man also. Yeah. Wow. Two down, one to go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Kelly, Kelly's uh, boyfriend is named John. Hmm. Yikes. Well, it's almost no. worse. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just tease it. It is no, Jonathan, well, no. so I think it's a little different than. Well, now now I don't know what to do. I, no, a- is it Jonathan? I don't know if it's Jonathan, actually. <laughs> I think I made that up. What? Now I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm always in the dark. Well, you're not going to be in the dark on the eclipse. Total eclipse of the heart. I'm so confused what's happening right now. I'm, I'm just singing the lyrics from Total Eclipse of the Heart. Uh, okay. <laughs> John, right. I, I am looking. It looks like you might actually be in 80% coverage, so you won't see the full total eclipse, but you will be able to use the glasses to ah. see the sun move or the moon move in front of the sun and see like, you know, the, the curve and everything, but it won't actually perfectly match up for you Ugh. congratulations john All yeah right. let's just do let's just do will of the force <laughs> all right here we go will of the force i fear nothing for all this as the force wills it all right as you guys know will of the force is uh often supported by our patreon uh because you can at uh the major level start submitting questions to uh, will the force each week so you can send us the questions it's got to be a will question though like will this happen will so and so do this thing uh, but we're going to kick it off with one of our patreon questions coming from one of our patrons specifically commander Derek smith uh, Derek sent us the question will we get gallery episodes uh or a documentary about either andor or ahsoka on may 4th man there's some historical precedence for this Lacey what do you think uh no announcements yet what do you think yeah so last year we got Boba Fett right and then the year before that we got the Mark Hamill no Mark Hamill episodes came in August after Boba, the that was a couple season. years ago now yeah I'm losing track of time I feel like we were just in 2020 and <laughs> trust just me out of that. I've had Trust two me. kids since then um anyway 
I think we will get some type of gallery or documentary series on May 4th, and I think it's going to be about Ahsoka. I would love to see more about Andor, but I think they're not going to do that until after Andor's done. I think they're going to do Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Ahsoka's yeah. hot right now. Special thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the Boba Fett was like, uh, it was called Under the Helmet. Am I right on that? Under the yeah, Helmet? Yeah, it, was, it uh, was weird. It was like a weird commercial. It was before. Before Book of Be- Boba Fett came out because I think right. it was like a sort of a special look and like the historical precedence of this character and it was the yeah. emotion Fett, leading yeah. up to the show. That was on May 4th, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. But, um, John, what do you think? Documentary, gallery? Uh, the only thing I can think of is they'll do the Ahsoka because it's under the Favreau umbrella still, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there'll be one on Andor. Um, I, I doubt that doesn't sound like something Tony Gilroy would have had any interest in, like having another film crew there to document it. Like he doesn't like star Wars as it is, let alone documenting how he made the show. So, um, the Ahsoka thing, maybe I'm still going to say no, though. I think the whole shifting and pumping of the brakes on producing, this a lot of this Disney Plus stuff is playing a role. So I think. What about Light and Magic? Light and Magic is they they finished filming it, so that is coming out. Season uh, C- series two. Um, that's do, different. Yeah, though. do you? Different. I don't know if that drops on this. Oh, you're day saying will Light and Magic come out on May fourth? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Joe Johnston did it. Um, I Although bet, it's not we, talking about Star Wars, though, right? It's talking about later after that. I bet I can, we, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I bet if we really wanted to, we could probably find out. But <laughs> I don't think we're getting more gallery uh, for now, anyway. So I'm going to say no. I don't mean to be a pessimist, but I would love to see it, of course. I love being Yeah, I, I'm with you guys. I, I I mean, we were like, Disney was all in on Disney Plus Like when it first launched. It was like, we're doing this show and this show and, and gallery was like six episodes. It was like, all, it was like, like almost as episodes. long as the series. Yeah, yeah. Or something. It was nuts. And then they started doing like, well, we'll do two. And then it's like, we'll do one, <laughs> you know? And they've really backed off on that stuff. And I think John, you might be onto that as far as they're, they really are backing out of like, why would we spend the money and create this content when like barely anybody's going to watch it? Maybe they just looked at the numbers and they just thought, oh, you're at home and you get exclusive access like this. Like, yeah, people are going to eat this up. And then people just kind of didn't watch it, maybe. Um, I'm not positive, but I would say probably nothing uh, in that regard on May the 4th, especially since we're getting now a lot of the announcements of what's coming on May 4th and it has not yet been announced. So I, Mm -hmm. I say no, and it might be the end of, them doing stuff like that but man it does seem so crazy that it doesn't it feel like it's just so easy to just be like let's just set up some cameras and and watch these people talk about star wars sure it's some great clips and and quotes from a lot of people we've had the opportunity we were sort of like if lots of people were like against taika watiti they were sort of like bought in on him as a star wars person just because a few sentences that he says during these galleries we're seeing george lucas on set and they're like that's you can yeah, I think you it's can really costs. like Let's save it. face and they're cutting yeah. a lot of costs and they're like, this is the quick thing that they can just dump. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's the answer. Um, I hope we get it, Derek. Uh, but good question. Um, here we got another one. Uh, it's going to be, will we see dark side force lightning used in the acolyte in season one? John, you're going first on this one. What do you think? Yes. I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think at the very end of the season, whoever's uh, whatever's revealed or whatever, we're gonna see some nasty stuff going on. That the Jedi are gonna be like, "What is the? I've heard of this. I've heard rumors, oh, not yeah. in our official textbooks, but you know, on the rumor mill about this or whatever." So, um, I think I think so. Yeah. All right, Lacey, what do you think? I'm going to say no. I don't think we're going to see Dark Side Force Lightning in Acolyte Season 1. I think if we're going to see it, it's going to be in another season. And I think, but at the same time, part of me is thinking that we're not, which is why I'm saying no. Because Force Lightning seems to be a very Palpatine thing. 
And the moment you start using it, it takes away from who Palpatine is. And then Ray had Force Lightning, which then connected her to Palpatine. So I feel like they're going to yeah. leave that to be his thing. Like he's so, so powerful. He's so good. That's fair. Not a good person, but like good in the sense of like so great, powerful dark mm. side user that he can use Force, li- force Did, Lightning. Because I, the moment you give it to someone else, he can't like who else Did has you- didn't Dooku use it or am I going crazy? Dooku used it against Yoda. Yeah. But well, I see your point, Lacey. It's very identifiable to to him. And then, of course, Ray because of the, the whole thing. But so you could say that not that this is canon or anything, but you could say that that if Palpatine was sort of the uh, arbiter of the force lightning technique, he could teach it to Dooku. He could uh, inherit it to Snoke. Who also used mm-hmm. a little bit of force lightning. He did, uh, and and then obviously Ray oh, too. Yeah. So it's sort of like you could like we might be missing somebody else uh, just so that palpable. has used it, but yeah, it does kind of feel like a palpable Fair. thing. So yeah, you know what? Lacey convinced me. Um, I'm gonna go with no uh, for that reason. Um, but I w- I was going no, to say no. yes because it's a nice, easy dark side technique that immediately brings back all those feelings of like. This is classic Star Wars. This is what happens. But I'm not entirely sure how many of the characters we even get on a regular basis are going to be that Sithy or evil. There, it feels like a very like dark, but not quite that deep yet. So, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I'll go with no on that one. Um, we got another Patreon uh, patron question here. Um, Admiral Christy Hines sent us over the question: Will several if not all of the Jedi in the Acolyte facing the possible Sith Lord lose their lives. This would leave the Jedi Order with only questions and uh, continuation of the Sith's anonymity. Uh, Lacey, what do you think about the chances of uh, them sort of rogue wanting it? I can't remember off the top of my head who's standing there at the end when it's like, the seven people, right? I can't remember who's there. I'm going to say no, because there has to be survivors of what happened. Like at least one person has to survive to tell the tale of what's going to happen or what's going on. Because otherwise, what's the point of this story if no one knows about it? Like it just seems a little, I don't know, silly. Because even Rogue One, everybody dies, but then they transfer the files and like certain people know them so that their tale goes on. And like, that's the idea of storytelling is like, you keep people alive. It's kind of like one of my favorite things about Coco, which is like, if you tell the story of your family members, they live on in the afterlife. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that. Um, I'm going to say, I thought you were no. going to say, I thought you were going to say pirates because there's that line in pirates of the Caribbean or that. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 Where if yeah. everybody died, how, how do we know the story? Yeah. How <laughs> and do we then know they're like, like uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, I so I I'm gonna say a good chunk of people will die. I think there's gonna be deaths left and right in this show, especially because they've been saying that in interviews, like, oh, all these Jedi are starting to die. Um, but I think some will survive, especially if they plan to do more seasons, which I think they do. Um, they're gonna need people to carry over. So I'm gonna say no, not everybody's gonna die, or everybody will not die. John, what do you think? I think there will be a couple of key deaths to raise the stakes, increase the tension, and immediately lock in that worry for other characters that you like. But I think most of the characters will carry on because I do think that they want to make the show go beyond a season one. Um, So... I'm only taking this question as the Acolyte right now, episodes one through eight. I just banged my nose in my microphone. Um, and uh, like, I don't think she's asking like ever in the history of this show, how many seasons it goes. So I'm just going by this segment of episodes. I think there'll be a couple of deaths because you, you need to. It's this dark side story. It's a mystery. They're unraveling these things of these dark forces and stuff like you need to have some loss it just can't it can't all be like this oh we're going dark side heavy this time star wars it's all about the sith and dark side and then everyone is indiana jones and gets out by the skin of their teeth i don't think so so or han solo yeah i i i think there'll be a couple of 
deaths, a couple of key deaths, but uh, I think we'll have a nice core of main players to continue on because that uh, the core of um, you know friendships and a team and stuff like that is pretty essential to Star Wars. So you got to keep some people together for a show that plans to continue on. Right. Um, yeah, believe it or not, that's exactly my take too, is my first thought on the question was, no, you're going to want to see a lot of these actors and characters return for the second season. I, I can't imagine they get to the end of this, um, you know, s- slew of episodes and then they just kill them all off. And then you're like, okay, well, what does Acolyte season two? Oh, is it now, um, uh, an anthology where we're going to tell like a different story or something, you know, it just, it didn't quite land with me, but if the question is like over the course of the, you know, the story that they're going to tell over multiple seasons, do these core characters all inevitably get killed? And, and so that the the thing gets hushed, um, that might be possible. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to see, but I'm going to go with John that if it's based on, what will happen in Acolyte season one or whatever we get that's they've already filmed. I think most of these characters are probably okay. They're going to want to keep them alive and they'll f- come up with maybe something. But unfortunately it's kind of like that Han and Lando thing where like, <laughs> you know, you eventually have to say they had that final moment where it's like, after what you pulled, you're right. But then you, yeah. you still, you want to leave it open for more adventures <laughs> leading up to that point nobody wants to really say that line or do that Mm -hmm. thing that is the like we're closing the door officially um but it might be one of those things where they're like we're giving you one more season finish your story that's it and then they're like okay cool we know exactly what to do all dead (laughs) so Mm -hmm. we will see i hope that answers the question christy great question um we got one more uh, before we get into our next segment. And this question is, will Disney reveal a brand new Star Wars live action series at D23 this year? Uh, Lacey, you are sort of the expert on, uh, at least with the three of us, with D23. When is it? And tell us if you think they're going to uh, announce a new Star Wars live action show. I believe it's in August, September, isn't it? I can't remember I think exactly August. the dates. Oh, it's August. That's right, because it's the week that I am not going to be here. It's August, uh, the weekend, I believe, of the 10th, right? Hmm. Um, First or second weekend of August. Awesome. Uh, Wish I could go. Can't go. Going away with the family. Having a nice little family vacation with my babies. August 9th to the 11th. 10th. Perfect. Uh, So, that being said, I wish I could head there. But if anybody is, have a wonderful time. Uh, I think they will announce some type of new Star Wars live action series at D23. I think they have to even, they have to at least have one in to be determined. Uh, Cause right now they have all these movies, but they don't have any shows. They have, these are the shows that are being worked on or coming out. They don't have anything that's like, Hey, this new story is coming. So D23 is where they announce those things. I think they're going to give some new, stories to star wars at d23 all right john what do you think i i hope you're right but i just feel like they're putting live action star wars on streaming in park um but i hope i'm wrong that's just a my mm-hmm. feeling so, i don't know james what do you think um what are we where, where, where what are we looking at for andor season two um. Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm gonna it say got delayed. I know the strike I, and stuff. Yeah. So I'm. I'm gonna say no, and the reason is is because I. I think a little bit of what um, John is saying is true, as far as them slowing down on the live action shows, but then I also think Lacey's right about you need that show that's ongoing, or upcoming. They can't like show that last show and then go six months before they announce the next one. They've got to have one more in the pocket before the last one is actually aired. Um, So with that being said, this fall, they will still have Skeleton Crew and Andor. So I think they're going to wait till Skeleton Crew's done and then you're in that pocket. Um, Actually, I guess they have Ahsoka too that they can 
also shoot for. I, I don't think there's going to be another announcement maybe until Celebration. Mm. Until Tokyo. So mm-hmm. not this year, not D23. But I don't know. I guess let's hope we find out. That'd be cool to get even more shows because I you hope Lacey's right, right cuz I'm all about more. Um, it is true that that's yeah. it, usually D23 is sort of an investor thing. It's like we we put out like a, a lot of announcements there, so Didn't they announce Kenobi there? They did. Terribly. They did. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring you out my friend, your next and it has stage. nothing do to do with to the tell big people. I'm like, "Oh, yeah. god." But I did like him saying yes where he's like Yes. Yeah. It was um, very cute. I cried. It was very cute. Yeah. All right. Um, Well, that is it for Will the Force this week. Uh, We are going to head into our next section. Lacey? All right, guys. It's time for the Patreon Padres. All right, guys. Patreon Padres. There are lots of ways you can support the show. You can follow us on social media at TRB Podcasts. You can like this video, subscribe on YouTube. We're slowly growing there. So if you want to see John in a gold bikini at Tokyo, oh. make sure you like our YouTube <laughs> channel. Uh, but more than that, you can um, leave reviews on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Rate the show. Let us know how we're doing. Let, share the show with other people. It lets us grow and our community grow. But if you want to be more than that, you want to let us uh, be a part of the resistance. You can head over to resistance or patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, starting at $5 a month, you get to be a part of the resistance and part of the community where you get to be part of the show. As James just said, you get to give your questions. Uh, we have mini episodes, discord servers, uh, soon to come merchandise and much more. Uh, so head over there. But this is the part of the show that we let our generals and spice runners, our top two tiers, take part in an episode. So first, before we do that, we're going to say thank you to those people. So thank you to our generals, Carmelo, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Frank Grande, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Danny, Mike Ramori, Brendan McLaughlin, Sneaky Zebra, Dave Hornack, and Jolton Jedi DiMaggio. Thank you so much. And to our spice runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Kendall Gellner, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers in the Fort Worthian. Thank you guys for keeping it spicy. Thank you. Um, so the way this works is we ask a question and our generals and spice runners get to record their answer and be part of the show. So this time we have Chris Morales. What up, Chris? And we asked him, what is your favorite piece of Star Wars content made by George Lucas? And what is your favorite thing made since he sold Lucasfilm in 2012? So Chris, take it away. Hey, what's going on, TRB? Uh, long time no see. My question was, what was my favorite thing that George Lucas released? And what was my favorite thing been since he sold it? Uh, my favorite thing that he released that isn't one of the movies, I want to say it's probably The Clone Wars. Uh, just because currently my kids and I are watching it right now. The way the episodes are structured um, has them going crazy to find out what's going to happen next on the, on the next episode. And we're almost done with it, and I know they're going to love Season 7. As for what's been released afterwards, as much as I love Obi-Wan, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Mandalorian, uh, just because it's actually brought a whole ton of new Star Wars fans in uh, to the fandom that we didn't have before, and it's all, honestly, I believe, thanks to that show. Uh, So aside from that, uh, glad to be here, love you guys, and I'll see you guys in Japan. Peace. Awesome job, Chris. And I think John's going to really love your shirt. <laughs> so, uh, John, what are your thoughts? Yeah, great shirt. Great shirt. Um, yeah, i uh surprised by your answer, honestly. Um, but great answers because it's funny you mentioned your kids are sort of getting into it through the Clone Wars. My son just started really expressing interest in Star Wars. I mean, partly because I have, I finally went to my parents' house and got all my Star Wars figures in this giant bin. I think I, I think I posted it in the, that was a big bin. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have like every, every week I let him come down and pick another figure to bring up to his like little, his little collection. And today he picked, um, who'd he pick? He picked old Obi-Wan. 
So, Ooh. but so, so that, that's starting, he's starting to like tell stories with the figures and stuff and it's making him want to watch the movie. So he started getting into it that way. So when you brought that up, I was like, wow, that's really cool that your kids are getting into it through the Clone Wars. So uh, I think that's really awesome. Um, and then as far as what they've put out since Mandalorian, I think that's a really uh, a popular pick for sure. Uh, a good one. So overall, uh, it's great pod race. I'm glad to see you back uh, doing them. I'm glad we're back doing them. And uh, look forward to seeing you in Japan, man. And I uh, hope you and the family are well. Thanks for being such an awesome fan and a supporter of ours as always. And uh, see you around, buddy. James? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm with John uh, as far as a little bit surprised. Um, I know there's a little bit of maybe recency bias because you said you were currently watching. You know, the kids were currently watching The Clone Wars. But I think it is one of those things where you're like, it, it, it's easy for people to forget that George did work on that show, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm glad that you were mentioning is that like, man, George really always wanted the show to be the serialized content and a lot, so much of the lore that we look at today comes from, and even acceptance of the prequels does come from the clone wars. And it really is sort of like, yeah, George made these movies, but when he really got to, get his hands dirty in this show he was able to really explore a lot of these crazy ideas and and that's fun as a star wars fan so i i get the clone wars thing uh mandalorian for obvious reasons you said them all that that's a great pick obi-wan you know how i feel about obi-wan so Whoa. i'm still surprised on that one but uh but hey man to each their own and i'm glad you're having a good time I'm glad you're a patron i'm glad you're always here you're hanging out you're a great person man thanks for doing the pod race Awesome job, Chris. I loved your answers. Um, honestly, Clone Wars wouldn't have been my pick, but I love that for you. And I love that you're uh, talking about doing stuff with your kids. Um, Daisy today actually just came into my office and pointed at my Chewbacca mug and goes, Chewbacca. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so proud. And then she was pointing at talking, uh, like talking back chopper or whatever it's called. And she goes, look at that guy. And I was like, oh, yeah, Chopper. And she presses the button and he does all the little stuff. And she goes, he's a silly guy. I was like, yeah, he is a silly guy. <laughs> Murder droid. He's a silly guy. <laughs> yeah. She, she knows Chewbacca. It's so cute. She's That's like, cool. it's Chewbacca. And I was like, oh. And the funny thing is she's only seen like basically – the baby mobile that's over Archie downstairs is Star Wars characters. There's R2D2, C3PO, and Chewbacca. So she'll go through them every day and she'll be like, Chewbacca's a Wookiee, R2D2 is a droid, C3PO is a robot. And like she'll do all these things. And then she knows um him from like I pulled up a reel, like a super clip of all the Chewbacca noises, like oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what she knows him from. That's it. She doesn't know him <laughs> from any movies or anything. Um yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And of course, she knows Grogu because she has so many Grogu things. But anyway, Chris, great answers. I love that you said The Mandalorian, speaking of Grogu, uh, because I would agree. I think The Mandalorian is one of my favorite things besides, I would, you know, it's tough because then I'm like, The Force Awakens, Solo, Mandalorian. Force Awakens, <laughs> Solo, Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, I go between the three of those all the time. I think they're the most rewatchable things out of the stuff that's been done. And I know someone somewhere is screaming out, Rogue One. I'm sorry. Uh. But yeah, thank you so much for your support. You're an awesome guy. Can't wait to see you in Japan. What? You know what just dawned on me right now? Hmm. The Jedi. Um, and I don't think it's I don't think it's intentional, but I just noticed that you can spell Grogu using the letters from George Lucas. Hmm. I wonder if they did that on purpose. I'm kind of curious about that. I, I it's I not wanna, all of the letters, but yeah, there's like there's two G's, an R, a U, and an O. Something oh, to think about. Interesting. Chris, great shirt. Have a wonderful day. You're the best. Uh, and now we're gonna go, John. All right, let us discuss. <laughs> Obi Wan once thought as you do. I don't know why I did it like that, but anyway. Uh, we're all <laughs> we're all here having a good time. All right, here's the deal. Uh, you know the title, so our discussion today, we're just gonna you know speculate a bit. Is Star Wars moving away from trilogies, the staple? Uh, so with the return of Star Wars in 2012, they did announce Episode Seven, Eight, and Nine, new trilogy. We're used to it. We loved it. 
we were excited for it. Three movies, awesome. But the newest slate of upcoming films appear to be standalone projects. Uh, I believe Daisy Ridley said her movie is its own thing, maybe a sequel one day. Uh, so no predetermined set of films or anything like that. So is Lucasfilm done with trilogies or or at least predetermining that there are going to be trilogies? Uh, maybe the Ray movie winds up having two sequels and turns itself into a narrative trilogy. But uh, if they are done with trilogies, is it a good thing? Um, what do you think about it? Do you think they're done? So let's just dive in and, and, and talk about it because I could be wrong, but I feel like the Star Wars trilogy was like the first trilogy. Like, I think it I, was I'm, the first blockbuster trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, like it just set the tone and someone's going to bring up like in a good way or a bad way. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it, yeah, it sort of, it sort of set the tone for that staple. And then it, you know, the prequel trilogy came out, then the sequel trilogy. And we, we almost sort of felt like it's supposed to come in threes in that way. Um, obviously Rogue One and Solo being vastly different um, in the Clone Wars animated movie, but you know what I mean. So, and, and then, you know, Ryan Johnson, they announced he was getting a trilogy, uh, which doesn't appear to be happening. Uh, and then the Benioff and Wise guys said their series of films was going to be a trilogy about the Dawn of the Jedi, uh, not mm-hmm. happening. So mm-hmm. I wonder if that's what caused it. Like this whole, like, let's announce a trilogy. Like the, maybe they're like, we need to just try to make a movie first, you know. Um, and also, is is this how the sequel trilogy was handled? Part of why they're not doing trilogies. Maybe they can't find a, one director to Peter Jackson this thing and do three movies. Maybe that's yeah. their hope. So I I feel like they are moving away from trilogies, but it doesn't mean, like I said, that the Ray thing might it might still end up being a trilogy. But they just don't want to tell us that. So that they are stuck with it. Um, are you guys feeling that way too? Or do you think, no, they're doing these movies now and eventually they're going to do a, a trilogy down the road. Wait, James, what do you, what do you think? What, oh, what do I think? Um, yeah, I do think, I do think they're moving away from trilogies. Now, one thing to remember is when they made that announcement that you said at the beginning of this, it was, hey, we're doing a new trilogy. They also did mention standalone films. We're going to be doing a film every year. And we're going to do standalone films in between the the trilogy. And so the plan to do standalone films was always there. Um, I think you are right that there's a good chance that there was a lot of pressure on seven, eight, and nine, uh, especially after seven was as successful as it was, that I think they, they probably were like, man, there's a lot of speculation and hype like not in a good way. Like, oh, I can't wait to see that movie. Like if this movie doesn't do exactly what I need it to do, it sucks and it's garbage. And I think that really messed with Lucasfilm a lot. They saw dips in box office. They saw, uh, you know, a split fandom. And, you know, I think that stuff happening the way that it happened probably did scare off some of these people. Um, Possibly Ryan Johnson, you know, who was the sort of the beginning of that. Uh, but then also Benny and Weiss, like you mentioned. Um, I don't know, man. It, it doesn't feel like that's a safe bet right now for Lucasfilm. And I think you're exactly right where, um, actually, to make a comparison, uh, Marvel versus DC. You know, I think Marvel did this thing that was really great. And they're like, all our movies are connected and they build on each other and everybody's going to got to go see the next one because it connects to the one they like. And then DC was like, I'm going to do that too. And it was so bad for DC that they were like, yo, (laughs) standalone Joker movie, you know, like this thing, this thing, this thing, like, let's try to break away the best we can. And if we ever go down that path again, it's going to be completely different. Um, right now, what is doing the best for us is these movies that are singular movies that we can just hype up and say, come and see it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, don't even worry about it. It's the next 10 years of your life are not ruined. So, um, cause we're making more, we're doing different things. I think that's where Lucasfilm is right now. And, and we can also talk just, you know, we can touch on 
that what we were discussing earlier about Disney Plus shows, like how does how does that also connect into how their plans yeah. have changed? So, you know, maybe it's like we were going to do a trilogy, but instead we're going to turn it into 10 episodes of a TV show, you know, and, and, and maybe that's a better way to handle it than trying to do three big theatrical pushes, you know, or something mm. like that. Who knows? Yeah. What, yeah. Do you, what do you think, Lazy? I think that they, mm, the original Star Wars trilogy is such a perfect storm of moments to make such an impactful, uh, you know, cultural phenomenon that doesn't really happen often. Like, especially nowadays, I feel like people watch something and move on to immediately the next thing. They don't have the lasting cultural significance of like us, the original trilogy I agree. where it was everywhere. Everything was based on it. And like you said earlier, John, Star Wars, when it became that three movie blockbuster, that set off, I think, the idea in every movie studio that they're like, we have to do three. Like Back to the Future, we have to do three. Mm -hmm. uh, Jurassic Park, we have to do three. You know, like it's just all these things that you think you need three movies to tell the story instead of the forgetting that the only reason there's three movies is because George was writing as he went and was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do three movies. It wasn't like this big elaborate, like I'm doing three movies plan. Right. Um, it, it's, we've gotten to a point now and James touched on it with streaming that people are focusing more on what is the best way to tell the story? Now I'm not saying that's not impacted by studios who are deciding how many episodes there are, or, Hey, you need to make this many movies, this many episodes, Th something that, you know, really annoyed me. I would say in the past 10, 15 years with movies, especially franchises is where they would have something like, I would say the hunger games is a good example where you had three movies, three books, and you split the last one in half. Fair. Oh my God. I hated when studios started doing that. They started it with Twilight and that set the course for, Hey, we're doing that with everything. I <laughs> think just like with star Wars, people saw that as a success and then decided, Oh, now everybody needs to do that. The problem here, which you have both have stated is that Lucasfilm has worked their worked themselves into a box because they had to tell three to finish the nine. Like, because George set it up that there was, you know, six, seven, eight, then one, two, three, they had to do, wait, I did that wrong. Four, five, six, one, two, three, yeah. seven, eight, nine. Uh, so they had to do three. The problem is, is that the story wasn't there for three. They had one story, which then turned into a different story, which then went back to a different, but the original story of what was there from the first movie. And I think if studios and especially Lucasfilm focused more on what is the story to tell instead of let's fit this into a certain box into a certain mold that has worked so far uh, they would have seen more success I think they really did themselves in by getting a different writer for each movie and a different you know director for oh, each yeah. movie and it just didn't work well and it worked for George but I think, I don't know. It just, it didn't work for this. I think you had too many drastically different viewpoints. Like there wasn't one common thread, which was George in the originals. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, I think not we, but Lucasfilm and Star Wars in general went awry at, at, at moments. That, yeah. I agree with that. And also the fact that, <clears throat> I remember people in Chicago, yeah, it had been Chicago at the time, Celebration, telling us that, you know, we're hearing word that, you know, they're going to split it up and finish it with an episode 10. Yeah. And I remember being intrigued by that idea because then you're like, all right, the saga is one through 10. That's nice. And they have time to answer Neat. questions. And then they could yeah. stretch it out a bit, introduce the Palpatine thing in nine, let people settle on that. And then take it where you got to take it with 10. Or like James, you had bought, brought up in the past, which I always liked, of which is like reveal Palpatine in eight. <laughs> then I think even 
when nine oh yeah yeah around. i was thinking even seven because they did that in the novelization you the heard book the voice voice. or whatever right that but yeah maybe good. my pitch at one point was eight go with just giving us that time in between the movies to be like oh so that's where they're going with it interesting yeah and i think because the first star wars trilogy um, like, like Lacey said, wasn't a trilogy. It was Empire Strikes Back when they were filming was called Star Wars two. Um, they weren't <laughs> sure, you know, what I think Harrison Ford was only signed on for the two movies. The other three had three. Um, and then the prequels had to be one, two, three, because when Empire came out, all of a sudden Star Wars was number four. So Luke's is like, well, I got to do one, two, three. So there's, there's <laughs> your pre-planned, your first pre-planned trilogy, uh, and then, you know, Lord of the Rings comes out and they do the three because of the books. Um, and, but then the sequel trilogy, I think you're right, Lacey. I think they were just sort of like, yeah, George always talked about a seven, eight. So nine. we have to do three. Yeah. Yeah. We got to do three. That's the I'm interesting kind of, thing. The comparison to Lord of the Rings right there, too, because also side note, just like how you were talking about George and how it wasn't maybe all planned. The Lord of the Rings was one book that somewhere along the lines, the publishers decided what, they don't want to sell this giant book. They could make more money if they could convince Tolkien to like that whole story was one book it was one book. And then, oh. and that's how I think I, I could be wrong on this, but it, I think it initially shipped like that. And then at some point they were like, let's make more money on this and split up the story into the, into the, the multiple books. Uh, and then you can sort of, you know, you might be able to like digest it a little bit better, um, but sell it as sort of as a collection. And then that had been going on for a while. And then when they decided to adapt the movies, Peter Jackson pitched it as two movies. And then they were like, uh, why don't you just do three? And that's sort of like, and probably he shot them made, all at the same time. Right. And it, that's sort right, of that yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and did, and did you know that when he kicks the bucket, he actually hurts <laughs> he his, breaks his toe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but, mm -hmm. uh, but not to get into that, but yeah, it's, it was Peter sort Jackson of this thing where like, even he, no, even he, what? Did you just ask, did Peter Jackson die? Yeah, you said when he kicked the bucket. No. Oh, no. Viggo Mortensen a, a, kicked the bucket and he broke his toe. That's like one of the like jokes. It's an ongoing facts. joke where like if you're too into the Lord of the Rings, you're always like, uh, that's where he know? killed. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like a fact. Ergon dies? heard it a thousand times. Yeah, whatever. Um, what are you talking about? He's just getting off on the kits, kicks Kick the, the bucket. bucket means dead. Yeah. No, there's an like actual the movie, bucket in the movie that he kicks. Yeah, he gets mad and he kicks a bucket and he like actually broke, broke his, his toe. Was he wearing open yeah. toe sandals or something? Yes, yeah, but correct. it was like a metal bucket. I don't know. Oh, no, yeah, it was a it was wood like bucket. chain mail sandals. He's wearing like uh, Peter Cushing slippers and he just like kicks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I was anyway, like, where's like, the disconnect here? So it was one book and then eventually Peter was like, Lou, we need to do two movies. And then the studio was like, you need to really make three movies. And he's like, oh, good. So even even that concept of like the trilogy for Lord of the Rings. Gosh, what a tangent. I meant to say one little thing. Uh, it, uh, well, it was all you, John, throwing me off with your kick in the bucket. Get out of here. All right. So tr trilogies. Um. I don't even know, man. Matrix. You want well, <laughs> let's put it this way. Oh, they're making the year about them in the fifth matrix they're doing. Get out of here yeah. with that. that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of times where sometimes the trilogies are what fans want. Like you got the matrix, which are like, just that's, you know, we didn't like the last two movies, but don't make a fourth one. Don't make a fifth one. You I know, also, you, you're doing more Jurassic park, you know, or you're doing a, a fourth toy story. Like people are like, it ended so good at three. Stop. Yeah, but four you know? was really good. But now they're making a fifth one. They're making a fifth. I, I also think maybe part of this and th this could just be me, but I think people always liked the aesthetic of the home video trilogy collection, like the Indiana Jones really? trilogy, you know, so what a great trilogy, trilogy. sounds good. You know, trilogy. Yeah, trilogy you get the does bonus sound disc. Good. So then when Indiana Jones 4 came out, I had to take the bonus disc out and put the fourth one in. So there was the four pack in that brown leather, you know, whatever. Indiana Jones lost them, what, 130 mil? Speaking of what, Indiana the, Jones. The new one? Mm-hmm. 130 million. It was marketed Oof, uh... horribly. It's actually a pretty good movie. I like, I like it, but 
Um, I do like the movie. I think a couple odd choices or missteps, but nothing that like breaks home. The like, voice at the like, beginning. The movie sucked. What? His voice at the beginning. He when he's young, Indiana Jones. Oh, he and still so has. I'm, yeah, well, because Harrison Ford filmed I'm a spry the spy twenty nine. But yeah, you gotta de age the voice. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, but anyway, um, I don't know. I like if Star Wars th- like came out and like say they do the Ray movie and they do all these movies they talked about, and they all come out and we all love them and all that, and then they said. We are going to do a trilogy, though, of, you know, this or they decide, you know, the mangled thing needs to be this big biblical thing. And they're like, we're going to make this a trilogy. I wouldn't be like upset about that as long as it was um, like James Mangold is doing this trilogy. He plans right? then out. we know. Yeah. Then we know he's got it under control. Whereas <laughs> the, the, the problem is the baton. Was, they can't even get one movie down at this point, if we're being honest. That's the other thing, too. We just want a movie Like, made. Taika's like, I don't know what the middle of my movie is. And they're like, what? I forgot. I forget Sir, about that all the time. It's been like four years. Yeah, that he's yeah. making a movie. Figure it out, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, is Christy Wilson Carnes even still involved? I like, don't think so. And probably not. Michael honestly. Waldron it's- was like, I'm so excited to write Star Wars. And then he's like, I'm yeah. not writing Star considering Wars. That, considering um, the other Damon thing Lindelof. with um, the, the, uh, no, the, um, the Lando show where like the writer was just not involved. It's like <laughs> he's right. on the red carpet for Haunted Mansion being like, I guess I'm not <laughs> writing this anymore. Yeah. yeah. So wild. It you is know, wild. Yeah. You bring up the the mangled thing that you know. There's always that possibility where they could sort of backdoor some of these into a trilogy. They could say, exactly. "Oh my gosh, it was very well well received. Should we do a second, or should we just shoot two and three at the same time, or should we announce that we're just going to finish the story with two more movies?" Like recently, um, you know, the last Avatar, it w- had one season, but there's sort of like three seasons to the animated. There's sort of like three books. So when they when they announced that they were going to pick up the show again, they announced seasons two and three. So they're like, we're get, we're just going to do it all. So it's kind of like one of these things where maybe it can be more accepted if the first thing is great, you can announce that you're doing two and three, uh, and that's a little bit more than just saying like we're doing the whole series. And then like the first season is rough and you're like, I don't, you know, what do we do? Do we just exactly. like cancel the show or back out on the promise or still just keep doing it, trucking away and it's diminishing returns like crazy. Um, so yeah, I think maybe announcing two and three could be a good, uh, could be a better way to handle it. I also tend to think that there is um, not like sort of the, the maybe plan, mm-hmm. Um, like we'll do one movie and then maybe two or three. Uh, but I think there could still be a plan that they're like, we want to do that big announcement, um, of we're doing a trilogy of movies and this is when it takes place. My gut says that's old Republic. Cause, cause, um, mangled stuff is way even further back. So I think there's this perfect era where they could really do whatever they wanted um, and I think they might be saving that because otherwise I feel like we would have gotten it in a TV show. We would have gotten it in animated. We would have gotten it in a book. We would have gotten it in a video game, something. I think they're staying away from that era until they are absolutely confident that they have the marketing ability to be like star Wars is back in a big way. We're doing a trilogy. This is the story. This is the series. It's going to be this person who does the whole thing. Like Lacey was alluding to earlier. Uh, I think yeah. my gut says it's that there's the Ryan Johnson thing, but I think that that does not have the power at any point. I think in the next couple of years to say like Ryan Johnson's finally doing three movies. I, oh, that, I, yeah, he doesn't even refer yeah. to it as that now. He, I yeah. think the last thing he said was like, like show really. anything. God he's like, willing. he's like, he's like, I still talk to them. <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. I still talk to Kathleen all the time, but yeah. Uh, I think another element which we sort of blends into all of it is uh, the uncertainty with box office these days too. And it's yep. like if the Ray movie, you know, what's success now? Like b- a billion dollars. Like we had this supreme confidence as Star Wars fans. We're like, whoa, it's Force Awakens, two billion. Rogue One, billion. 
and then uh last jedi billion and then it, all of a sudden you know solo off of the heels of what happened with last jedi and the marketing and stuff but then covid and the strikes and I don't know what's successful for a Star Wars movie. Like, we'll find out what they consider successful. We'll find yeah. out what their budget is, that sort of thing. And is TV it, too, like Mandalorian, hot, 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 and then all the other shows after that, diminishing returns. Yeah, like we did Will the Force on the, the Favreau movie, and we're like, will it make over $500 million? And the fact that we're asking that question is... That's the over-under? Proof of, yeah, where we're at. It's just bananas. So... I think that's a part of it too. Like, they, like let's make a movie and see if it does well, and then, then we'll make Top Gun three. You know, I think the story right. just has to be there. And speaking of Top Gun, they had just said that Tom, I guess, read the story and was like, "Okay, we're good to go," and they're starting to write it. Wow. I know, right? I'm so pumped. I'm Your so boy's pumped. gonna be back, Glenn Powell. Yeah, they'll they'll kill him though. No. Well, you can't kill Rooster. No, you got to kill somebody in Top Gun. Yeah, you you can't kill Rooster. Nobody killed him. Who died in Maverick? Oh, I thought you were going to say who died in Top Gun. What? (laughs) I thought you were going to say who died Um, in Top Gun. Who died in Maverick? Uh, They didn't do that. They almost killed off um, Iceman or whatever her name was. Oh, Iceman died. You're right. Yeah, but that wasn't like a dramatic death in the sense of like shot out of an airplane. True. No, he just died of a terminal illness. Right, but that was kind of expected because he was sick in the movie. Yeah. Like yeah. you're like, oh, he did pass away. He just saw him and he was very sick. You know and, what I mean? Like it's not that it's not point, sad. You, you watch the trailer and there's a moment where you see a coffin and, and we're all like, Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we know somebody's gonna die, so there's no plot twist there, but we also can probably assume we could guess it's probably going to be Iceman because of I think Val we Kilmer. did guess. Yeah, I think I did guess it was going to be Iceman. So the but. question is, is Top Gun going to be a trilogy? Are they going for the trilogy? They can't. Yeah, I think so. That's what it seems like to me anyway. But mm. I don't even think they should do a trilogy. I mean, f- fine. Top Gun made a lot of money. It was so a great movie. Perfect. Do a third it was one. Just sure. So good. But, yeah, but you're right. Sometimes break the mold by being like, you know what? Oh, actually, here's another thing. Dune. Like I was I was very confident going into part two uh that Dune was only part one and part two. That's what they were doing. And then you watch the movie and I'm like, what? And I, I'm like, I start Googling online and yeah, sure. Few, Dune few Messiah, months before, Messiah, right? Messiah, yeah. A few months before, a few even like weeks before. Yeah, there was a little bit of rumbling about, and maybe that's because there was like press screeners or whatnot, and people were starting to buzz about it but I had no idea that they were planning a trilogy. And I mm-hmm. was, I was totally down with like Terminator, Terminator two, you know, like, Dude. and that's all there needs to be. And just like the two part, the one and two back to back, very cool. Doesn't need to be three. Godfather. Um, Godfather three that, is brutal. I know what, what's, what's the best two parter though? And you can't say like Terminator because they did do the three. You can't say Godfather because they did do the three. Oh, you mean that where they the stopped best, like, after two? They really did. Like, this is part one. This is part two. That was the story. Uh, it was probably awesome. Probably Grease, I would say. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Get out of here. I mean, no, I love yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer, but what? Um, I would say probably Batman. Batman and Batman Returns. Returns. No, no, I'm saying Batman, other... Batman Returns, Tim Burton. Batman. That's that's tricky. Because the continuity is still there in Batman Forever because it's the same Alfred and the same Commissioner Gordon. And um, but I I do only see those two as two. I, I ignore that's fair. You know, the others because it's Michael. Then, Keaton, it, but... then it might be Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. And <laughs> Beetlejuice. 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 Don't they have to do a third? Because it's, it'd be Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I don't think Tim Burton's going to do a third. I think mm. this is it. He might if this was wildly He saw successful. what's her name from uh, Wednesday Adams and was like, she she's perfect for every project moving forward. <laughs> Jenna Ortega. She's my muse. Yeah. yeah, Jenna Ortega, yeah. She is good. Yeah, that's true. So, 
so let me get this straight. There is actually no answer to this. We have we we're unable. I to honestly come up can't with think of anything. Great, I was going to say pirates. Like part one, pirates part two. was three. Pirates was a right. trilogy until they made right. the next pirates one. was more than a trilogy. They did. But I'm saying and, it was originally a trilogy, and then they decided yeah, three, four, and five. Um, what else is a trilogy? Well, Frozen I mean, was a trilogy, but now it's four and five too. It was almost uh, Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049, and that was going to be it. That was the story, but they're doing another. So they yeah. are. Yeah, they're doing. Yeah, 2073 or Tron, something. Tron, Tron Legacy, and now there's this new Tron. Now there's Tron Eris. I thought of that too, is when I thought about Blade Runner. Hold on a minute. Blade Runner 2049. I mean, that movie made like $12, didn't it? Blade Runner 2049? No. Yeah. I like do that, not think that was a bomb. I think that was a big success. Oh, it made two hundred and sixty million on a one hundred and eighty-five million dollar budget, so it probably lost money. Big success is not what I should have said. <laughs> so you can't you can't make solo two. Let's make that the greatest one and two of all time. There you go. Which Man. again, that was supposed to be a trilogy, according to. Well, at least he was signed on for three. Yeah, Aaron Kellyman said it was a series, so. Oh, uh, well, we'll see what a they Willow do. A Willow was supposed to be oh. two and three. <laughs> John, it was Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. That's what it is, Ghostbusters, uh, yeah. That was good. They've now done Afterlife and Frozen I haven't Empire. seen the new one, yeah. I, I haven't seen the new one, but I did get my trap. I got the AMC Theaters popcorn. Did you go get it from the famous Danbury Lowe's? I had it delivered. <laughs> Shut up. No, you didn't. <laughs> The worst. <laughs> John's over here complaining about Taylor Swift flying in her private jet, and he's having people drive to his house every day. Well, no, I'm not driving. It's not my carbon footprint. It's UPS's. <laughs> Kyle uh, still has other deliveries to make. It's not just my house. So You know the um, UPS driver? Yeah. It's Kyle. All right. Yeah, well, because one day um, I was outside doing yard work and he saw my hat and he's like, oh, you're from so-and-so? And I was like, yeah. Uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, me too. And it turns out he lives like across the street from my parents. So there What's you go, up, Kyle? Kyle, my UPS guy. <laughs> Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to Kyle. <laughs> I, uh, um, yeah. I did do a quick Google real fast uh, and it pulled up a few, but not worth mentioning the 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 one that I think we missed, Kill Bill Volume One, Kill Bill Volume Two. Oh, that's, that's good. Probably yeah. a good a Tarantino. Uh, a one of my favorite Tarantino. Part one, but... part two, and that's it. That's the story we're never gonna do mm -hmm. anymore. Kind of thing. Yeah. Well, um, we will see what Lucasfilm does. As of now, it does appear that uh, trilogies are at least off the table as a plan, and that could be a Disney thing. Too, they could have said like, "Hey, no more trilogies with you guys. Just make a movie, and then we'll see what happens." Uh, which is fair, you know. They have to get something going. Uh, not sure if it's going to be Rogue Squadron, but <clears throat> Patty Jenkins is owes them a script at least. Um, all right. Any final thoughts on trilogies? Uh, and I guess last last question on that: Do you want them to do another trilogy one day? If it's written in advance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's a planned trilogy in a way that it's not just like we're planning to make a bunch of money, mm -hmm. but more like we have a story that we want to tell. And yeah. it's one person uh, either written or directed by one person, then yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we hope you enjoyed this conversation. Let us know what you think. What's what's the story with trilogies and you? Do you think they're uh, done for now? Do you think there are no more trilogies? Or would you like to see them in the future? Hit us up in the comments, social media, Patreon, uh, wherever. And thanks for listening and watching and being a part of TRB. We appreciate it very, very much. Um, uh, Lacey and James did all those plugs before, so we can just uh, tell you as far as we go, uh, we'll be back with you on Thursday night, TRB Live, talking the latest news and all that good stuff. And then uh, next Monday, we have uh, episode 700 of TRB. Uh, but uh, until then, hopefully things start warming up around here. Uh, the way Star Wars is starting to heat up because a lot is coming on May 4th and, of course, the Acolyte. But as far as me, you can find me on uh, X uh, at Johnny Hoey and my movie podcast, Just Like the Movies. 
Uh, we're doing Usual Suspects uh, this week, I think. Uh, Lacey, how about you? People can find me on social media at Lacey Gillern and on TikTok at It's Lacey Gillern. All right. And James, I know you uh, have an announcement as well. So yeah, take it away, pal. Um, okay. So yeah, you guys can find me on social media <laughs> at Meyer Trunks. Um, but as of next week, uh, I will be leaving TRB. Uh, I know it does seem a little bit sudden um, that uh, this is coming quickly, but we are, as John said, coming up on our 700th episode. And almost to the day, actually, uh, my seventh mm-hmm. year, like off by just a few days. Uh, seventh year, uh, seven years of doing the show for me. Um, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, I've enjoyed every moment uh, of the podcast, um, including, you know, special trips, <laughs> events, uh, growing the show to what it is, Mando Fan Show, everything we've done. Um, and probably most importantly, being able to interact with uh, listeners and supporters of the show um, over all the years that we've been doing it. Um, as we approach that milestone, I thought a lot about uh, my time with the podcast, and uh, I felt that it was kind of okay to close that chapter of my life. Um, uh, we have honestly always had like a really good uh, work-life balance when it comes to the show, um, but you know, recently I started thinking more about like how often I really do think about the show and how much I'm sort of pulled away by certain aspects of it. And so I decided, uh, you know, I, I sat down with John and Lacey and we, we came to the conclusion, um, that TRB will continue, uh, without me, uh, as opposed to just the show ending the podcast. That's, that's not happening, which is great. Uh, they're going to keep, keep it going. Um, so next Thursday will be my last live show and the following Monday will be my last episode of the podcast. Uh, and then as far as the bad batch reaction show goes, I will continue that series out until it finishes, which will be my, then it'll mark my last contribution. Uh, so, uh, make sure you come back, check out those episodes, come and hang out with us. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, Hell of a run, pal. Seven years. 700 okay. episodes, 700 or seven years, 700 episodes. I can't ask for anything better as far as lucky numbers in the sense of uh, how successful we've been as a team. And more than that, because that's just TRB. That's not even counting Mando Fan Show, all right. the other stuff Absolutely. that was separate that we did. It's just a lot of stuff because I'm seeing a lot of podcasts now celebrating like our third hundredth episode, our 300th third episode. Hundred? Third hundred? Yep. It's like That's 12. Technically I'm, still correct. The yeah. third hundredth. But uh, of course, I'll leave it to me to buff that. But, <laughs> but you know, and th- and they've been around, you know, as long as we have. It's just, you know, two episodes every week and we rarely miss time and stuff. But it's it's also cool for me. And I know it's probably cool for you, James, that we have kept this podcast family friendly. So Bennett could always say, like, let me see what dad was doing and, and all that Absolutely. stuff. Because it will, it will live Don't on and stuff. But go on Patreon, though, because... Some Don't go on stuff. Patreon, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, hell of a run, and you know, we'll we'll uh, we got two more episodes to go, but uh, we'll obviously stay in touch and connect and all that stuff uh, yeah. as always. So this is just the the end of this, you know. Yeah. But uh, um, all right. So uh, with that, uh, let that sit, uh, sink in. But we have more to do. So. The three of us will be with you on Thursday night, TRB Live, as always. So enjoy your weeks, and we will see you next time right here on the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids.